Hey there, here's my take on chapter two of Master and Commander by Patrick O'Brien. So the chapter opens up with Captain Aubrey meeting Stephen Maturin for dinner. Um, and I guess they finalize that uh, Maturin's going to be a surgeon on board the ship. Um, it's kind of interesting. There's this weird dynamic that's going on between them. So he's obviously not never been a surgeon before. But Aubrey's kind of begging him to come on board. It seems like he needs, uh, desperately needs crew members, even though we later find out that he has way too many people on the ship. Um, but I think there's also this thing of Aubrey feeling a little bit lonely now that he is a uh, in this leadership role, and he doesn't really have anybody to that's on his same level. And so I think that's part of the reason why he invites uh, Matt Turin on the ship with him so that he can... Um, I guess just be himself with somebody who's kind of his equal, even though he's a civilian. Um, yeah, so that, that's kind of one of the themes of the chapter is uh, Aubrey moving into this new ship um, and getting settled before their first mission. So kind of going along more with the plot, he is looking to add these 12-pound cannons to the ship. And I guess 12-pound cannons are huge because the ship ends up getting weighed down with all this crew members, um, all these cannons. And so, again, I was confused with this naval terminology of exactly what the hell is going on. But I guess they're trying to maneuver the ship and do before they go on this first mission to see how it handles with all of these guns and all this crew aboard. And something starts to break. And so they have to, uh, t I guess, take the cannons off. And um, yeah, make the ship lighter for the uh, for the upcoming mission. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, I know that Captain Aubrey is a able, um, you know, officer in the Navy. So I don't know if him trying to add these cannons shows his inexperience, or if it more shows how eager he is to get, you know, a big prize, which is kind of what they're talking about in the first chapter. Um, so it could be a little bit of both. I mean, maybe he knew that the ship would be two way down, but he was just so eager to capture a big prize right away that he, um, you know, decided to try it anyways. And he's, you can tell he's so happy that he has this leadership role. I mean, he's been waiting so long to have command of a ship. Even there's one of the crew members remarks towards the end of the chapter that after all of this, uh, you know, trying out the ship and all the maneuvers and it definitely not working. The captain's still trotting up his, you know, into his cabin all, you know, happy and content like he was the, you know, in charge of 50 ships, um, even though he just has this one crappy old ship. Well, I guess it's not crappy, but um, definitely old-fashioned, as it says in the book. So, yeah, still enjoying this chapter, even though the, uh, you know, some of what was happening during the, exercises that they were doing with the ship went a little bit over my head because um, of the language uh, and the naval terminology. It's still enjoyable to read um, because it, it's definitely not the main part of the of the book. There's definitely dynamics between the leadership roles and the crew um, that, that take up a large part of the book as well. So that's my take on chapter two. Um, I'm going to keep trying to read the book and I'll post a video as soon as I finish the chapter. That way I can better describe, you know, the plot and then kind of the, the goal of this channel is to get into a little bit more depth than just reading something for entertainment. So that's what I'm trying to do and hopefully I'll get better as the chapters come along. So stay tuned for chapter three. Thanks. Bye-bye.